You're listening to Menopause Natural Solutions, Episode 81, Omega-3 and Menopause. Welcome to Menopause Natural Solutions, your podcast for all things perimenopause, menopause and beyond. Stay tuned as your host, naturopath Jennifer Harrington, explains how to use natural therapies to find your ultimate health and happiness during your transition. Hello ladies, I hope you're all well out there. I want to apologize today if I sound a little bit funny. I have a cold. No, it's not COVID. I've been checked. Thankfully, it's uh, just a, a common garden variety. But if I sound a little bit strange, I do apologize. But I had to get on tonight because I am so excited that yesterday was my book's first anniversary. I can't believe it's been a year since From Invisible to Invincible hit the bookshops. And to celebrate, I updated the interactive version of the book and added 56 pages. So if you haven't got yourself a copy of my book yet, now is the perfect time. Head to my website and purchase a physical copy of the book and I will gift you the new and updated interactive version for free. But guys, if you've already bought the interactive version. All you need to do is re-download it and you'll get the updated version. So I haven't forgotten you. Thank you so much for, um, for purchasing. But if you are new and you do buy it, I'm also going to give you an invite to my Meet the Author Zoom party. And this is a chance for us to chat personally about all things menopause and an opportunity for you to personally ask me any questions that you may have. But anyway, we need to talk about omega-3s. So omega-3 is an essential fatty acid that plays a major role in both improving your menopausal symptoms, but also your general health. So let's dig in. There are three forms of omega-3. There's ALA, EPA, and DHA. ALA is sourced from plants. Think flax seeds, sea buckthorn, soybeans, canola, chia seeds, walnuts, etc. They may have a cardioprotective effect, so they may be beneficial for your heart. And they may be preventative against cancer, um, possibly breast and colorectal. But its main benefit is in its ability to be converted into EPA and DHA in the right conditions. But this is limited by many standard things that are in the Western diet, like excess omega-6, a deficiency in cofactors like vitamin B3, vitamin B6, vitamin C, zinc and magnesium, the presence of trans fatty acids, so they're your deep fried and they're your man-made dangerous fats, alcohol, excess insulin and lack of estrogen. So going through the menopausal transition, you may struggle to convert your ALA into the beneficial EPA and DHA. And this can be overcome by consuming or supplementing with EPA and DHA directly. Now, EPA and DHA are found in your animal products. So think fish, krill, and your grass-fed beef. If you're vegan or vegetarian, Don't worry, you can also get EPA and DHA in some species of algae. There are many benefits of EPA and DHA, but let's start with the menopause-specific ones. So EPA in clinical trial was found to reduce the frequency of hot flushes. Okay, in this particular trial, it didn't change the intensity, but if we could half the number of hot flushes you could have, I think that would be a massive benefit. If you are still menstruating, it can reduce the menstrual pain by reducing the inflammatory prostaglandins that cause the cramping like pain in the first place. And it may help to reduce vaginal dryness. So now let's have a look at some general health benefits. 
EPA and DHA are needed for the development of a healthy phospholipid membrane. So every cell in your body has this layer on the outside of the cell. And this is what allows nutrition into the cell and expels toxins out of the cell. So it's needed for healthy cells. And also a healthy cell is a happy, energetic cell. So you're more likely to find that your energy production is a, a better quality and a better standard when you have healthy phospholipid membranes on your cells. EPA and DHA are also used in the production of your signaling molecules within the body and also at the insulation of the nerves that are sending your signaling molecules. It helps maintain the elasticity of the arteries, reduces blood pressure, prevents blood clots, stabilizes heart rhythm, helps maintain a healthy heart and cardiovascular system. It also reduces inflammation in your joints. So it may help to also improve, improve sorry, joint mobility. So anyone out there with the 50-year-old shoulder um, or any sort of osteoarthritis or joint kind of issues, definitely fish oil would be a wonderful thing to consider. As fish oils reduce inflammation, they re reduce inflammation everywhere. When we're thinking about inflammation in the brain, an inflamed brain is more prone to anxiety, depression, ADHD, so EPA and DHA, but in particularly the EPA part for your brain when we're looking at moods and the DHA component when we're looking at cognition. So if you're having a combination, you've got the best of both worlds. It can play a role in weight management. It may have a cancer protective effect against breast and colorectal cancer and may improve respiratory conditions, especially if it's uh, inflammatory related like cystic fibrosis or asthma. It could prevent or delay the progression of age-related macular degeneration. As DHA is a structural component within the retina, an EPA reduces retinal inflammation. While we're talking about the eyes, oils can also help to reduce and to relieve dry eye syndrome. So there's many, many benefits and I'm sure that there's something in there for everyone that you would go, oh, I wouldn't mind ticking that box and improving that aspect of my health. But I should tell you about some of the warnings. And the first thing is, if you are supplementing with oils, you always need to take them with food. I have learned firsthand that oils on an empty stomach can make you feel very, very nauseous. And if this is the case, it's really short-lived. You just need to eat. You need to put more food in to release that feeling of, of nausea. The next warning is if you're on any blood thinning medication such as warfarin, I would speak to my doctor before I would start um, taking it. Have you heard of the Holman test? It's sometimes called the omega index or the omega-3 to omega-6 ratio. And we haven't spoke about omega-6 yet. So omega-6 is another oil. It can be beneficial with wound healing. It is pro-inflammatory. So if you've cut yourself and your body needs to heal, inflammation is beneficial in that healing response. And it can also be pro-blood clotting. So you can imagine if you've had a wound, you want to bring in the in inflammation so that it brings in all the immune cells so it can heal. And it also wants to clot so you, that you don't bleed out. But everyday use, we want to make sure that we have a good balance between some of these things. So omega-3 is very anti-inflammatory, where omega-6 is pro inflammation. Omega-3 is anti-clotting. Omega-6 is pro-clotting. So as a general rule, we'd like to see more of the omega-3s, but we do still need some omega-6s. And testing will let you know where you are in your ratio. And unfortunately, in today's diet, we will find that we have significantly more omega-6 than omega-3. And this is something that we really need to fix. Otherwise, you're going to have all those inflammatory conditions that we just spoke about. Well, I hope you found that interesting. 
that's it for me. Just a quick reminder, grab the book if you haven't. Now is the perfect time to get the updated interactive as long as your physical copy and come join me at the Meet the Author. I can't wait to see you there. Bye for now. Thank you for listening to Menopause Natural Solutions. This podcast contains general information about menopause It is provided as a guide and it is not intended to replace medical advice. Opinions of guests are their own and this podcast does not endorse or accept responsibility for statements made by guests. If you have enjoyed today's episode, please leave a rating and